And in all the religions of the world, God has always has a female counterpart. In Judaism, the female counterpart of God is called the Shekinah. Shekinah is the female principle of God, the, the female part of God. And so the Shekinah is what Moses goes up into the, uh, into the mountain to see God and to get the new Ten Commandments. And it says he goes up and he, and he confronts God in what is called the burning bush. In the burning bush, if you go on the web and look at the images and the pictures of burning bush, uh, many of them show what Shekinah really means. The Shekinah is the feminine principle of God. That God is part female. And this is why when you see on the news at night, if you go on the web and just go to the YouTube to see the Jews that are praying at the Wailing Wall. You will see the Jews at the Wailing Wall. And when they're playing with their, when they're praying to the, to God at the Wailing Wall, they're always bobbing back and forth. They bob back and forth, back and forth as they're praying. The, what are they doing? Why are they bobbing back and forth? It represents they're having sex with God. In and out, in and out, bobbing, bobbing back and forth. They're having sex with Shekinah, with the female principle of God. Because God is connected in Judaism to sex. Sex is the most important part of the experience of God. That's why you have homosexuality. That's why you have prostitution going all the way back into the ancient world that were temple prostitutes because according to the ancient people sex was the closest you'll ever get to god as the creation of life man and woman can create life mm-hmm. it's called sex no it's called connecting yourself to the god force and so it's a really incredible story about what god is in the middle east and the jews are praying at the willing wall and another point about the Wailing Wall is it has nothing to do with Judaism whatsoever. The Jews today believe that the Wailing Wall is a wall connected to the Temple of Solomon, Solomon's Temple, the great King Solomon, wise King Solomon. His temple, and, and, and according to the understanding today, God's temple is the Temple of King Solomon, and one of the walls is called the Wailing Wall. Well, in actual point of fact, the wall that the Jews are praying at is actually the wall of a Roman fort built by the Romans. And it don't have anything to do with any King Solomon or King David. Zero, nothing. It's a Roman wall. And go back to the encyclopedias and look up the Wailing Wall and look up the word... Uh, and Fort Antonia, the, the Wailing Wall is part of a Roman fort called Fort Antonia, the Fort Anthony, Antonia. And you will see that the Jews are today wailing at the Wailing Wall, praying at the Wailing Wall, which has nothing to do with King Solomon at all. It is a Roman fort built by the Romans, Fort Antonia. Go do some research on it. And you'll find out the Jews have been wasting their time putting their prayers into the wall. It's an old Roman fort. It has nothing to do with King Solomon, which incidentally, we, I will say also again, there was no King Solomon. Therefore, if there was no King Solomon, he didn't have a temple in Jerusalem. There was no King Solomon. He never lived. There was no such man. King David, there was no such man. Uh, King Solomon, there was no such man. All these ancient kings and princes and all these uh, highly uh, spiritual names in the Bible in the Old Testament, none of them are actual people. It's just a story. In point of fact, actually, historically speaking, what we call the ancient Israel never existed. There was no ancient Israel. It never existed. So the entire story in the Old Testament is telling you something that happened in ancient times. It was called ancient Israel. But in point of fact, historically speaking, there was no ancient Israel, period. Therefore, the Old Testament is exactly what the New Testament is. It's a metaphor. It's a symbolic metaphor Mm -hmm. for an ancient teachings that goes back into Babylonia, Sumeria, 
Medo-Persia, and Egypt. It's a Sumerian tale. It goes back to the ancient symbols and, and emblems of world religion. And part of it for us in the West is ancient Israel. But in fact, there was no ancient Israel. That's why the Messiah is not coming back because it's very difficult to come back to something you've never been to to start with. Jesus never existed. It is a symbolic term. There was no Jesus. So if you're expecting Jesus to come back, you're going to wait a long time. We've been waiting for 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. You've got another 2,000 years to wait because Jesus will not be coming back because the name Jesus is part of an ancient metaphor. It's a symbolic name. If you go back and do your homework and spend some time in a library instead of watching television, you will find out what religion is really all about. It's all about controlling the masses by right. the by the cartels that own the world. 